Hello and welcome, I'm Machine Dana. I hope you're doing really, really well. Uh, welcome to the channel, I hope you're having a great day. So, something cool happened yesterday. YouTube tweeted out, yeah, this. So they've announced that creators can now see the difference between the traffic that is returning traffic and people that are new visitors to your channel, which I think is a pretty cool thing because it means now that you can distinguish whether your channel is more of the growing type of channel or like a loyalty based channel or maybe you're transitioning between the two. I think it's really cool because it shows you how the videos that you make are impacting specifically your channel growth or not. And of course, the loyalty of your viewers. So in this video, I'm going to talk about a number of different things. First, I'm going to go through what has changed. Then I'm going to go through the data itself and understanding what it means to you. Key things to look out for, what actually is included and what's not included. A little bit about data anomalies. I'm going to look at growth percentage ratio and then retention percentage ratio two really important metrics here then we look at trends and then of course last but not least so you're going to want to watch to the end i'm going to talk about some actions that you can take based on the data that you see if you're new around here i'm machine dana i make the type of content that is geared around content creators particularly streamers if you've got a stream deck if you have a discord channel if you're streaming in any sort of way you'll probably enjoy my channel so if you do find this useful click the like button consider subscribing to the channel and we'll get going with this so the primary purpose really of this video is the stuff at the end where really we're going to be talking about actual actions you can take. But before we get to the point where you know what actions to take, you have to know how to interpret the data that YouTube is now giving you regards to returning visitors and new visitors. So what exactly has changed here? On your channel analytics page, you'll now see on the audience tab, a new tab called returning viewers. You used to only get the two here and it would jump straight into this content down here about when your viewers are live and things like that. Like that. Well, we now get this returning viewers tab. Returning viewers are viewers that have watched your channel previously and returned to watching the selected time period. New viewers are those who have discovered your channel the first time in the selected period. So somebody who's never watched your channel. There are some nuances to this. Note that viewers watching from private browsers, those who deleted their watch history, or those who haven't watched your channel in over a year will be counted as new viewers. So this isn't quite what it looks like on the face of it. But for all intents and purposes, if somebody's not watched a video of yours in a year, they basically are a new viewer anyway. So I kind of get why YouTube have done this. And what we now get is a day by day piece of data about your new viewers versus your returning viewers. The purple line is the returning viewers. The blue line is the new viewers. Note that this data is only updated every one to two days. So you will not see this updating on the fly. It will update hard coded every sort of day or two. Maybe that'll change in the future. So you're not having a situation like the real time where you're seeing real time views being added. Let's just talk about data periods briefly as well. So far, YouTube has got the data for the last 7, 28 and 90 days. So you can filter the data by a custom range as long as it's within the last 90 days and these periods are quite important because obviously they need to be able to link a person to a period and then some sort of previous period to know whether they're a new viewer or an existing viewer so for example if you have had a viewer a week ago and you've selected your range to be this current week then they will be regarded as a new viewer because within that last period of time they've now viewed another video in the current selected period let's say the one week period and that's why me as a relatively new channel I've got a lot more returning viewers in the last 7 to 28 days than I did have, let's say, three months ago. And I'll illustrate this as an example. So I've got here selected the last 28 days. I've got 1.5k returning viewers in the period. Now, you're probably looking at this and thinking, wait a minute, each day here you've got 100 and there's 28 days and every single one of them is above 100. Bear in mind that a returning viewer on one day can also be a returning viewer on the next day, in which case it's the same returning viewer. So you can have the same returning viewer across multiple days, which sort of waters down the data a little bit. So don't expect to see here, for example, if you've got 100 returning viewers every day for a 28 day period, you won't have 2,800 returning viewers because chances are some of those returning viewers will have returned multiple times. They'll represent on each particular day being a returning viewer. But if I now flick this to the 90 day period, you can see there's a lot fewer returning viewers, but my channel's only got 842 returning viewers in the last 90 days because I'm a relatively new channel at the time of this video, it's only seven or eight months old, my channel. So there simply weren't that many viewers in the period before to return to the current period that we've selected. So you need to bear that in mind 
when thinking about time periods. Just talk a little bit about data anomalies for a second. Just doing some quick maths here. My returning view is, let's say, on the 2nd of March 2021, 216 plus 1,690 new viewers. So this equals 1,900 viewers on the 2nd of March. Now, I know that I got more viewers than that on the 2nd of March. What's the reason for that? Well, some of them will be deleted history. Some of them will be private browsers, but also there may be some other reasons why, for whatever reason, those people are not included in the data. I can see on the 2nd of March, I got 2,280 views. So we've got a deficit of 373. So it looks like something like 16% of the views are kind of not accounted for. Obviously, that's just on my channel. It may be different on your channel, but you just need to bear that in mind. This isn't like 100% accurate as most things with YouTube, but it's going to be broadly accurate and it'll certainly give you some intel and some insights and hopefully that'll translate to some actual actions for you to take on your own channel. So now I want to briefly talk about the growth percentage ratio versus the retention percentage ratio. And this really just frames the data as to whether or not your channel is a broadly a growing channel or if your channel is more of a loyal viewership style channel where you've got almost like the same viewerships and perhaps your channel isn't growing as fast. Well, that might not be an issue necessarily for you. But either way, there are some actions towards the end of the video, regardless of which side you sit in. Or actually, you may be sort of somewhere in between, which is probably a good thing. So the growth percentage ratio is going to be calculated by the number of new viewers that you've had in a given period. For example, on a particular day, week or quarter. So let's just take a day as an example. And obviously, depending on the type of intel that you're looking for will depend on how far you need to zoom out here. If you're looking for intraday intel about what content to make, then you don't want to be necessarily zooming out for 90 days. Whereas if you're looking for more like overarching strategies for your channel, you definitely want to be looking at the more zoomed out data for 90 days, which is currently the maximum zoom out data you can get with this. And I'm sure that will change over time. So at the moment on the 2nd of March, I had 1,691 new viewers divided by the 2280 viewers that I had in total. My growth percentage ratio is 74.1%. That's because 74.1% of my total viewership in that period, that one day that I've chosen to look at there, were new viewers that had never seen my channel. Now, just a quick reminder here, returning viewers are viewers that have watched your channel previously and return to watch in the selected time period. Now, bear in mind here that it also says anyone that's not watched your channel for a year is a new viewer. So the previous period could either be the last 28 days here, depending on how YouTube choose this, or anyone from the last year. And funnily enough, on one of the articles that they've got here, Camilla, she looks like she's flossing there. <laughs> nice avatar. <laughs> Someone here says, what constitutes a return? Five minutes a day or another video? This question hasn't been answered yet, so it'll be interesting to see what they say about this. But that's exactly how you would calculate it. So you're taking the new viewer number and dividing it into the total number of views you had for the exact same period. In this case, it's a day. So 74% of my viewership on that day was a new viewer to the channel. That doesn't necessarily mean that the other 26% were returning viewers, because again, we've got like this percentage we calculated about 16% of a data anomaly as well. But let's calculate the same thing for the returning viewer percentage. So this is almost like a, a loyalty percentage. This is quite cool because it's a lot more refined than the subscriber percentage. The subscriber percentage doesn't necessarily tell you whether or not people are viewing or not. Someone could be subscribed to your channel five years ago and not watched a single video in that five years. And therefore, for all intents and purpose, purposes, they've come back to your channel as a new viewer if they view a new video after five years, regardless of whether or not they're a subscriber, right? So let's take a look at this 216 divided by the 2280 views on the day, 9.4% or 9.5% returning viewer ratio. So that's like a loyalty indicator, I would say. Let's talk a little bit about what this data actually means, okay? So any channels that are sort of how-to channels, someone searching for your content for a specific reason rather than you or your personality, these are people that are looking for something to do. They're trying to figure something out. They want information on something specifically, and it's the content-centric approach rather than the personality centric approach. So the how to videos and the tutorials and the guides type content that you see out there are likely to actually see a lower loyalty level unless they've been around long enough or they've got such a niche that the subscribership that they've built up has actually then pertained to loyalty over a longer period of time. So you would expect to see newer channels and how to channels have a lower purple line, which is the loyalty line, essentially the returning viewer line and a much higher blue 
line, which will be the new viewers. As you can see here, that's exactly the pocket that I sit into because not only is my content very how-to based content and quite a lot of the time people will be searching for an answer. I give them that answer. They may not be then inclined to subscribe or re-watch any more videos for that reason. They found their answer, in which case it's a high blue line, but also my channel being a fairly new channel is why I'm also seeing a high blue line. And that makes me happy because I now know that I'm reaching more and more new viewers because that blue line is rising over the course of, in this case, 28 day period. Now, if I just zoom out to a 90 day period, we can see that that trend has continued. But also what we've seen here, just for reference point, is the returning viewers 216 has also gone up from 29 returning viewers. But part of that's just a volume issue. It's just a data volume issue. If you see the opposite way round, whereby you're seeing a high loyalty line, a lot of retained viewers, and not as many new viewers coming to your channel as a percentage, again, talking about the ratio as we mentioned earlier, this is an indication that you have a very loyal viewership, but that you're potentially struggling to attract new viewers into your kind of family of subscribers, your family of YouTube. YouTube family? Your YouTube fam, okay? And that might be okay for you. You might be absolutely completely okay with that. It's good to have a balance between the two. And I'm not saying necessarily a 50-50 balance between the two, but just a balance between the two that will mean that you are both attracting some new viewers, but also retaining existing viewers. It's a really difficult thing to understand. If you're not retaining any new viewers, it's difficult not to take that personally because that could be a sign that your personality isn't great. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've got to say it. But it could be a sign that maybe you're not as friendly enough or there's not enough humor in your videos or whatever, but there's just the loyalty just isn't there for some reason. But it could just simply be a style of the content that you've got. For example, the how-tos and the tutorial style content, almost like throwaway content that someone can look at and never need to see again. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about what you can actually do here, depending on what your strategies are and what you want from your channel and of course what the data tells you. So simply put, if you're a new channel, really your strategy has to be to reach out to new users. Loyalty in the early days is less important for a new channel. And that's because you simply have no established style of content. More than likely, your content will change significantly over the course of a couple of years. Therefore, loyalty can be almost like created in due course. It's definitely more important in the early days to get newer viewers than it is to get loyal viewers. So if you're seeing a much higher blue new viewers line than a purple returning viewers line, if you're a new channel, that's a good thing. And you would want that to be the case for a long period of time. 6 to 24 months, that being the case, would be a good number, particularly if you're struggling for subscribers and things like that. If you're a new channel and actually the returning viewers is way higher than the new viewers, that's probably something that you need to be alarmed at because it means that your channel actually isn't growing necessarily or too much. And that's definitely a sign that you might need to try some new content, perhaps try some new content formats, maybe try looking at some parallel niches or expanding the niche that you do have to include some other stuff that's likely to attract some new viewership and therefore to grow your channel. Now, if you're the other way around and you've got a high purple line, you've got lots of loyal viewers, but perhaps your blue line, the new viewers, is quite low, particularly if that is low and trending lower, that's definitely a sign that your channel could slow down its growth. And although it's good that you have the loyal viewers, you don't want that trend to continue and you do need to consider different content styles, perhaps looking at different thumbnails, trying new titles and experiment with new niches, perhaps things that are a little bit more parallel to what you do or even something completely different altogether on your channel. So what YouTube's done here is really cool. I think it's good that they've separated out this data. I'm surprised it's taken them so long to roll out this data, to be honest, but it's good that that data is now still here so that people can interpret it and make content decisions based on the data that they see. Don't rest on your laurels. Look at this data, interpret this data and do something about it. Change your content, improve your content and yeah, like and subscribe. See you later.